Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Programming. Kevin here, and I am very, very excited to be back with you, in particular because I was able to record this footage using an external recorder. Hooray! Which means that we should have no more issues with lost footage or dropped frames or things uh, interrupting the launches with random out-of-memory errors and all that sort of nightmare. Also, the sound should be back, which is a great thing. Um, so yes, today we are launching a test, a series of tests, because um, I've talked about this in the past, how, you know, basically our ascent profile, um, which we haven't really revisited because I've always just said, ah, I tweaked it and it worked. Um, that basically the way that we've set it up is to declare a series of uh, gradual steps and that at a certain altitude it should set its uh, it should set its heading to us to a certain pitch and we just kind of go through and tweak that as uh, as we go through well I think it's probably time for us to evolve that strategy because in particular with our last uh, mission when we were trying to load up uh, the uh, fuel depot to the KSS it took an awful lot of tweaking and even then it was only able to get it into an orbit that was kind of iffy and so um, for our first kind of test flight I put together this very simple craft it's got maybe 4500 meters per second of, of Delta V um, and I just grabbed one of our launch profiles that we've been using and didn't tweak it and just said all right let's go ahead and run it and see how that goes and you see the engine cut off um, while it was still pointed mostly up which indicates that yeah we if we wanted to actually use that system we'd have to do an awful lot of tweaking and of course this is still under four times time acceleration and it's waiting to get to apoaps before it can go ahead and try and circularize and you know as you know that has seemed to cause problems in the past so today we're going to go through and i'm going to talk through some of the ways that we can evaluate how this stuff works and there we go we're finally doing our circularization um and i've actually set up this craft so that we can profile stuff and try and determine you know better ways to come up with a more general solution for getting ourselves to orbit and then once we have that it should be a problem that we can mostly leave alone and you'll see there it is actually reverting itself so let's jump over to the code really quick and i can talk through what actually happened just there Alrighty, so here we are in the file that just ran. Um, I've set this up so that it waits for me. Um, I've said print toggle RCS to launch and then wait until RCS. Um, and because RCS is a Boolean value, meaning it's true or false, and it's off by default, this will wait until I turn it on. Um, and then this is the strategy that I just kind of copy and pasted from previous episodes. We copy over our maneuver library, we copy over our ascent library, and then we define an ascent profile. And it's just a list of all of these random values. We say, all right, at an altitude of zero, you should have an angle of 90 degrees off of the horizon and an altitude of 500 an angle of 80 degrees and I've kind of gone through and um, kind of as as the mission uh, you know as a particular craft doesn't work for a mission I'll go through and say uh, okay maybe you know make it 60 here or get rid of this or you know various things like that um, this is not the best strategy <laughs> and we're going to work on trying to improve that but then once we've gone ahead and de declared our ascent profile we'll lock the throttle to one wait a second in stage and then we have this uh, library that takes in that list of arguments it says execute ascent profile and we say that we want to go uh, 90 degrees which is east and then we say here's the profile to do that and then this terminates once it gets to its final uh, element of the ascent profile. So once it reaches an altitude of 70,000 kilometers, then it sets the angle to zero and turns the thrust off. And then we go, okay, once you're done, wait until we're close to apoapsis. Not by any sort of exact means. And actually, I think in the past we've actually had some maneuver calculations. That's why we actually require the maneuver library, but I guess that uh, disappeared at some point. Um, we wait until we're close to apoapsis and we'll throttle up and then we'll wait until our periapsis is greater than 70,000. Now, one thing to note is that because we're requiring it to be 70,000, that does not leave a lot of margin for error. And it also means that we, if we happen to be past the apoapsis, a lot of times we'll end up vastly uh, making a very inefficient burn because we end up swapping our apoapsis and periapsis and it becomes a whole nightmare. So this was just kind of to get a baseline of where we were at. And the reason that I did this is because there's actually a second CPU on the same craft. And let's look at the code for that one right now. All right, so here we have a function called log telemetry. And I'm gonna skip over this just for the moment. Um, and this is kind of the main loop of what we're doing. I'm saying we're gonna do the same toggle RCS to launch thing. So this doesn't start until we've turned on RCS. We're gonna set a start time to the current uh, seconds 
we're gonna notify that we're beginning this test and we're gonna switch to the archive volume. Now we're gonna start logging out. Uh, well, we're gonna log an empty string to a file called ascent.js and we're gonna delete it. This is just a way to make sure that if it doesn't exist, it's not gonna throw an error when we try and delete it. And then we're gonna log out some very weird stuff. We'll pass over that again uh, to that file. And we'll say, okay, so until we are out of fuel or our vertical speed is less than negative five, so we're dropping or we're past our apoapsis, or we've lost a connection with remote tech. And then we're gonna call this function called log telemetry, and we're gonna do this every 10 times a second. Then once that's done, we're gonna say, if you have a connection, log out some more craziness uh, to this ascent.js file. And then we're gonna say, test complete, and we're gonna wait five seconds. And now we're gonna do something really cool called revert to launch. Now, obviously you can do this with the mouse, but um, in the most recent version of KOS, there is this module called KUniverse, which has these utilities in there. It's uh, the module where they put all the stuff that sort of breaks the fourth wall that, you know, theoretically your, your ship shouldn't be able to say, ah, let's revert to the VAV or revert to launch or whatever. But we're gonna use that here because we're using um, this particular flight as a simulation so that we can get this data. So what we're logging out, the first thing, and we'll pass over kind of this var data thing for the moment, but we're logging out time, altitude, angle, apoapsis, eccentricity, which is the difference between uh, the ratio of our apoapsis to periapsis, and the delta V that we have remaining on the craft. And so this is just outputting the headers for that. And then inside this log telemetry function, well, we have all of those broken down. So. Let's see, this is gonna go set output to, well, we say we're declaring an output to this brace. And this is because we're actually making um, a file that is legitimate JavaScript code, which is a little bit kind of rule breaky. I uh, never kind of intended to do anything outside of Kerbal script, but we're gonna see why this is cool in a little bit. So I'm gonna just go ahead and start appending stuff. We're gonna first get the time. We're gonna say, okay, the current time minus whatever that start time was. And then we'll add a comma there. And we'll say, okay, our altitude is the alt radar. Add a comma. And we're going to get the angle by taking the uh, angle between the two vectors of up and the direction that we're facing. And we'll add a comma. And we're going to grab our apoapsis. We're going to grab our eccentricity. And then we're going to calculate our delta V. And this I just kind of stole from our other libraries where we've done that sort of thing. But just put it in here in line where we get the dry mass we calculate our delta V based on the ship's engine ISP and all of that stuff. And then we're gonna go ahead and log out that particular entry to ascent.js. And so let's take a look at what we actually got out of doing that test run. Alrighty, so here's the file that this script actually logged to the archive volume. And you see there are all of these entries here and we've done CSVs in the past, if you remember where you basically you just have A, B, C and then a new line A, B, D, or whatever, and basically you can use this format and upload it to Excel or Google Sheets, and we've done that in the past, but I felt for this one, we probably wanted something a little nicer. And so I've actually have, I'm having this write out legitimate executable JavaScript code. And so we say a variable called data is going to equal, and this is um, array syntax, which is kind of equivalent to list syntax in KOS. Um, and so what we're saying here is that data is an array of arrays and the first item of that top array is these uh kind of uh, you know names of the fields and then every single time that we called that function we were logging out all of this information so we get um you know the time was zero and then we were at you know 20.47 blah 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 altitude um our angle was 89 degrees our apoapsis was uh 83 meters above uh, above where we were at. Um, our eccentricity was 0 0.99 and our delta V was zero. Now that's because we didn't launch and eventually this sort of picks up. And if we go down to the absolute bottom of this file, it is a very, very long file um, and just keeps adding these things. And then we log out this final close bracket to say, all right, I'm done adding things to the array. Now what this means is that I'm actually able to use this JavaScript file, I'm gonna be able to set that data variable and use it as part of just a browser page. And I'm not really gonna go through this code, but basically it just transforms this into something that a library called HiCharts can use. And it exists as just a single web page that we can just go ahead and open up. And if you have Notepad or whatever, you can go ahead and paste this into Notepad and name it .html 
you know, whatever.html, and then open it up in your browser, and you should be able to see the actual data presented in a chart format. So let's jump over and look at that now. And here we are looking at our KSP Ascent data, and you can see that we've got uh, markers for all of these uh, values that we were taking a look at. We've got altitude and angle and apoapsis and eccentricity and delta V. And you'll notice that these are very much on different scales, which is part of the reason that I wanted to use something like high charts, which actually um, allows you to correct for this to some extent. So we can see that our, altitude, or our apoapsis over time um, grew and then leveled off. And it leveled off at 318. Uh, kilometers rather than, you know, the 70 or maybe 100 that would have been reasonable. I mean, ideally, I'd love to get into an orbit that is 100 uh, kilometers, uh, has a 100 kilometer apoapsis and periapsis, but we vastly overshot that and then we just kind of stayed there. And okay, so let's go ahead and hide that. And we can also take a look at our altitude because um, obviously our apoapsis um, increases you know, b before then, and then eventually our altitude would just uh, reach that same point. Um, and if we hide this, then this thing is going to automatically scale because all of these are in different units. Um, you, know, we're, you know, we're dealing with kilometers, which is, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, several hundred thousand, uh, whereas delta V we're dealing with, um, okay, so that's, that's where our craft kind of started out at, at a little bit more than uh, 4,000 meters per second of delta V. And we can see that over this period of time, it uh, significantly dropped off and then it remained flat. And then we see another dip and that's presumably when we reached apoapsis and we were trying to, to, uh, to circularize. And we can double check that by just looking at um, our apoapsis and we see that, yeah, even though it's uh, resizing the scale, we can see that that happens right around that same time. If we drop off the uh, delta V calculations, we can take a look at the angle and we can see that, okay, we started off here at 90-ish and then it slowly tilted itself over to about 80 and there's a lot of wobble. If we zoom in here, we can see, yeah, there's a lot of oscillation where it goes between, you know, 79 and 80, so not too bad, a little more fluctuation over here. I can go ahead and reset the zoom here. And then it remains relatively linear throughout that whole process until it gets down here and then, you know, we're pointed mostly at the horizon. And then finally, we can take a look at our eccentricity. And this is where we kind of get an indication that maybe our strategy is not the best. So the eccentricity, if it's a value of one, it means you are very, very, very not circular. Um, ideally, you want your eccentricity to be zero. And so what we'd like to see is during our ascent, we'd love to see this be more of a straight line. Um, and instead we see, okay, well, we, you know, around here when we hit that, you know, when we started to tilt over to 80, then, okay, we, our periapsis got a little bit better, but not by much. And then it remained pretty much flat this entire time. Um, and that's what we were waiting, coasting up to apoapsis. And then we tried to burn as much as we could to get our periapsis up here. And even then we didn't do such a good job. So this is, uh, kind of our baseline for where we're starting at with the code that we currently have. Let's try and take a look and see if we can come up with a better strategy. Alrighty, so here is the actual navigation control for our second test flight. We're gonna do the same wait until RCS, but we're actually not gonna include the libraries that we were doing before. We're not gonna have this list of various parameters that say, you know, wait until you get to this point and then step down and wait until you get to this point. That gives this sort of ladder effect that I think causes us a lot of problems. So first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna lock the throttle to one. We're gonna lock the steering to 90-90, which is straight up, and then we're gonna stage. We're gonna wait five seconds um, just to make sure that everything's hunky-dory, and then we'll actually go ahead and try and optimize things. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make sure that our throttle is constant or our thrust is constant. So obviously as you're losing mass in the ship, propelling with the same amount of force is going to do more. You're going to accelerate faster. And so we want to account for that. And also gravity is less of an effect as we uh, get higher up in the atmosphere. So I've locked G to this formula that calculates the gravity based on our altitude and I've set max thrust to weight ratio to the ship's max thrust divided by gravity times the mass. So that's just determining if we're firing at full throttle, what does that really mean? Um, how much acceleration are we gonna be able to get out of there? And then I'm gonna say, we're gonna lock the throttle to 1.3 divided by the most that we can do. So if, if we can, you know, if, if at full throttle would be, uh, our, our, our thrust to weight ratio would be 2.6, well, then we're going to fire at half throttle. And then just to be absolutely safe, I said, uh, make sure that we at least 
uh, if, if it ends up being larger than one, well, let's ramp that down to one because the value for throttle has to be between zero and one. So this is just a way to make sure that we our acceleration is constant and we can try and tune other things while we're doing that. Um, just to kind of test that out. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, let's, let's linearly decrease our pitch based on how close we are to our goal. So I said, okay, we want to get up to uh, 100 kilometers, right? And we know that at the start, we want to be pointing straight up. And ideally, at the end of it, we should be pointing horizontally. So, okay, we're going to lock the desired pitch to 90 minus how the percentage of the altitude that we've achieved, because we've got out radar, which is, uh, you know, our current altitude divided by... Uh, 100 uh, kilometers so if we're you know if we're at 50 kilometers then that's uh, you know 0 0.5 and then we're going to multiply that by 90. so this is just saying that you know if we if we imagine that this this bit here um, is zero well then we're just going to have 90 and then as we get closer and closer to that 100,000 um, then we're going to end up with a pitch of zero then we're just going to lock the steering to that heading we're going to say go east with this pitch and then finally, this is very important to remember with uh, KOS, is that you need to not terminate the program or else it will uh, remove your throttle. So I've just said until zero, wait 60 seconds. And that'll just do that forever. And remember, we're relying on our logging script to actually do the, okay, I'm done. Let's go ahead and revert this craft. So let's take a look and see how that launch went. And back on the launch pad, we are beginning our test again. And... Uh, Hopefully a little more optimistic that this thing now obviously we're not tilting over to 80, 80 degrees right away And it does seem to have a lot of uh, wobble as it's trying to <laughs> fix itself to the appropriate uh, to the appropriate pitch um, But it does seem like okay. This is perhaps a little more promising that is it is linearly going to tip over right so it, we should be at 90 when we're at a hundred thousand which means we should be at 45 when we're at 50,000 which is perhaps a little iffy and we see that yeah we may still have kind of the same problem that we had before um, now of course this is under four times time acceleration as well so you may not notice that this is accelerating a fair bit slower than uh, the previous test where we basically just said go full throttle um, which obviously is going to just pick up uh, acceleration as we get further up in the atmosphere now there is a problem though and that is as soon as we reach kind of the dense part of the atmosphere this thing flips um, we hit the dense part of the atmosphere and because we're not going fast enough and because we're deviating too far We just kind of pancake against uh, The thicker part of the atmosphere and you see that now we're burning down and okay It's gonna say you're decreasing in altitude. So our test is complete. Let's take a look at the results Alrighty, so disasters aside. This actually looks like a much more reasonable data set um, Surprisingly we take a look first off at our apoapsis. We got to above 70 but we didn't go drastically above 70. Um, obviously, we still plenty of fuel, and it's possible that we would have uh, done that if we hadn't, uh, you know, smashed into the atmosphere. But um, and then we got there, and we see that yeah, we started to flip over, and then our apoapsis started to decrease as we were pointing in the absolute wrong direction. But that's fine, uh, you know, for what it is. And we see that now we actually have. Um, you know, in the previous one, we had this big spike in the apoapsis, and then it flattened off, and then it was uh, kind of our altitude's job to just try and catch up with that. In this case, our apoapsis is just a little bit higher than our altitude, and that increases over time, but we're much more closely matching that, and we're, you know, we're, we're trying to make sure that the difference between these two things doesn't become so drastic, um, because that means that we're probably pointing way too much up and not enough uh, lateral. So let's get rid of the apoapsis, and we can take a look, yeah, real quick, the altitude we got up there, and then it uh, it killed it as soon as it as soon as it recognized that we were going down. So we didn't see. Uh, so the data kind of cuts off before that sharp decrease. Let's get rid of the altitude, and now we can look at our delta v. And now this kind of makes sense because we set our thrust to a constant thrust, which means that our acceleration should be constant. Which means that the amount of delta v that we're losing should you know be constant, should be linear. That over time we're using the exact same amount of delta V and so we expect this lovely little line here and we see that by the end of this when our apoapsis was 70k and our um, our, our altitude uh, got close to that amount as well well we were uh, you know we still had about a thousand left so you know that's better than we were at before obviously we didn't complete uh, our circularization but it seems somewhat promising 
And now, of course, here comes the bad stuff. Now we see we still have the same kind of crazy oscillation within this range. Um, not too much, you know, all within, within about a degree. But, you know, it's noticeable enough to show up on this zoomed out view. And uh, we can see that our angle, because it is linear and because we were trying to get to that 100 kilometer, we never really dipped below... 55 degrees and even up here at 55 degrees how high up were we what was our altitude there let's see yeah so okay 47 kilometers up somewhere around there we probably should have been tilted over far more and then obviously you see uh, yep okay then we got up to you know point it straight up and then oh man things went horribly horribly wrong and it took us a while to cancel out our vertical velocity but then uh then the ship just said okay we're we're, we're done and then finally, we could take a look at our eccentricity. And this actually looks really, really, really good. Um, over the course of time, you see, by the time we got to, you know, just about the point where we failed out, our eccentricity was, um, oh, no, you know, you know what? I'm getting tricked by the scales here. Yeah, because this is still 0 0.9. This is not good at all. I am lying. We're just dealing with a very, very small scale. We had bad eccentricity of, you know, not a circle at all to only... <laughs> 10% of a circle by the time that we failed out. So definitely still a lot of room for, we need to be tilting over much faster. Doing this linearly is not the best approach because it means that, uh, you know, it takes us way, 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 way too long to dip. So at this point, I uh, racked my brain and I said, all right, well, let's look at some of the strategies that other people are employing and let's see how we can go about testing one of those. So let's take a look at test number three. All right, so for test number three, I decided let's go ahead and take out this uh, thrust limiting stuff just because I feel like we probably need to set that cap a little bit higher. That's probably something that we can tune. Um, you know, we can say there should be some sort of maximum at some point, and we'll figure that out at a later point in time. But much more, I'm much more concerned right now about figuring out what that pitch is. And instead of doing this linear thing, where we just said um, alt radar divided by that, so the percentage of where we want to be times 90, I'm now going to raise it to an exponent of 0 0.5. And this is the same thing as doing the square root of this item in here. So what instead we should see is a much, uh, is, is a, a much more pronounced curve, which should mean that we start to tilt over much more reasonably at the beginning and our pitch should be a little bit different. We're gonna do the same thing locking the steering this is all very much the same. And obviously these are parameters that we could go ahead and tune in the future. Let's go ahead and run it and see how it goes. And back on the launch pad, test number three. And you can see already it's tilting over uh, a lot quicker, which is great. Um, the idea here is that we should have some initial uh, tilt over and then it should kind of even out and then uh, kind of taper off as we get up to uh, the regular point in time. Now the problem though is that because we are running full throttle and you'll notice here um, we eventually start to pick up uh, some not insignificant re-entry effects or not re-entry effects but uh, you know wind shear I guess um, and in fact this one ended because we simply ran out of fuel at a certain point which is a little bit frustrating but I think once we go back and look at the data, this might be the right approach that we can fine tune in the future. Let's take a look at that. All right, so here we are looking at the data for test number three. And right away, you can see this is uh, this is different. Um, we got our uh, apoapsis up to 100 kilometers here at the kind of 100 and, well, after about two minutes, because these, these are seconds down at the bottom here. And then things kind of went crazy. Um, Obviously, we part of this is because we took off that thrust limiter, um, and when we have that on, it kind of uh, counteracts the problem, but we got up to the point where we had less fuel, and we were pushing a lot of mass, and we were still not completely uh, horizontal, and so, boom, this thing shot up to 6,000 6, uh, 6, kilometers uh, by the end of things, which is when it ran out of fuel, and rightly so. 6,000 kilometers is far higher than we should want to go for just getting ourselves into a regular orbit. So this is not uh, not ideal. And you see it's it's uh, so massive here that kind of everything else is just kind of pales by comparison. If we zoom in here, now we can see, you know, at least this component is more reasonable. And we can certainly say, you know, um, go until your apoapsis is like 120 and then just stop. And then we'll say, we'll hope that the air resistance by that point, um, you know, only reduces it by maybe 20. Um, you, you, by, by that point, we were at you know 43 kilometers off of uh, off of the ground. Um, let me reset the zoom again. 
And if we take this off, we can take a look at our altitude. We got up almost to the point where we wanted to be, which is great, um, just shy of that 100 kilometers. But obviously, we ran out of fuel, so not the perfect thing. And, you know, we spent 4,000 uh, meters per second to do that. We take a look at our angle, and now we see, okay, this is looking a lot more reasonable. Um, still some oscillations here. And we see oscillations at kind of different points um, in the curve. But um, you can also see here that... Uh, now this doesn't, yeah, part of this is because we didn't get up to that 100 kilometers, so you, you don't kind of see the tail off here. Um, but let's see, if, let's see if it looks a little bit clearer when we zoom in. Uh, okay, not so much. Um, but we're not seeing a linear curve this time, um, and obviously this is kind of uh, counteracted by uh, you know, the, the resistance to changes in, uh, in pitch. But, um, you know, hopefully this should this should be a little more reasonable. And by this time, we were at least down to 29 degrees. So we were pushing our apoapsis pretty crazy, but at least we were closer to that horizontal bit that we wanted to be at. Um, now, okay, looking at, oh, no, I have some, yeah, I misclicked that. All right, our delta V now, of course, is back to its nonlinear form because we're just firing at 100%, which means that, yeah, we're going to, we're going to drain it uh, faster and faster as we go along. So, you know, perhaps not the best. We uh, we may want to go ahead and try uh, putting that thrust limiter back in and then maybe tuning it um, so that it doesn't end up having issues uh, with, uh, with the atmosphere. And then finally, here's the thing that I'm kind of excited about, though, is we look at our eccentricity and we start off as, yep, not a circle, not a circle, not a circle. By the time we get to uh, that point of... Uh, you know, what is it, 45 kilometers, something like that, we have put a lot of effort into our periapsis. We are like half circular, which is great because ideally we'd love our periapsis to be just shy of the same as our apoapsis by the time we reach orbit. I mean, in, in ideal conditions. And then obviously things went crazy when we just started shooting our <laughs> shooting our apoapsis up to, uh, you know, 6,000 6, kilometers. But I think this has an awful lot of promise. So if we take a look back at our code, we can immediately see that there are a couple of places that we can tune. So one of them would be to, you know, uh, you know, set a thrust to weight ratio cap. The other thing that we can do is actually start to tune this exponent here. So maybe it's not the square root, but maybe it's the 0 0.6 version of root or 0 0.55 or whatever. And we can go ahead and start tweaking that and maybe even, you know, set up some various offsets, put this, you know, cap this at, uh, you know, make sure that the angle is never uh, more than or less than certain amounts or, you know, perform just various offsets to this so that, you know, we can kind of tweak that profile. And I'm not going to do that in this video. I think I'm probably going to play with this a little bit before the next episode and try and get the values that happen to work for the stuff that I'm testing because otherwise it would be an awful lot of test runs. But I just wanted to kind of show, um, you know, kind of the ways that we can go about evaluating this and looking at, um, you know, the graphs and stuff. Obviously, the uh, index.html file is in the code base. If you want to take a look, the link is down in the description. And it should just work if you're going ahead and logging out this sort of information and you end up with a file that looks like um, looks like the one that we looked at, then it should be able to just go ahead and grab that in and just chart all of that data. And you can go ahead and review that for your own needs. So that is, uh, that is going to be it for today. And we're going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to try and tweak this and make it even better for future episodes, and I will see you then. Cheers.